Hi everybody, my name is Sam Pedro and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk about Ralph Waldo Emerson and share three habits he used which helped him to become one of America's greatest thinkers and writers. So if you don't know who Ralph Waldo Emerson is, he lived in the 1800s and he was a very popular essayist. He was also a lecturer, so he toured the country giving lectures and reading from his essays. He was also one of the leaders of what was known as the Transcendentalist Movement, which was a branch of philosophy that focused on self-reliance and independence, and also on the good nature of humans in general. He had many followers, including the likes of Henry David Thoreau, and even Walt Whitman, and many others. So a few years ago, I actually read a biography about Emerson. It was called Emerson, The Mind on Fire by Robert D. Richardson. It's a phenomenal book and I was just blown away at who Emerson was and just how he conducted himself day to day. And while reading this book, I came away with three habits that Emerson did every single day that made him such a great writer and such a great thinker. And that's what I wanna share with you today. So the first idea was Emerson was a writer and a collector of sentences. And this might be kind of a weird concept, but for Emerson, words needed to mean something. And for him, the best way to employ the power of words was through sentences that were perfectly crafted and got their point across. And so to do this, he constantly was just writing sentences in his notebooks. And a lot of times he was in a state of flow, uh, a natural flow to his writing where he wasn't prejudging anything that came to the top of his head. He would just keep writing sentences and try his best to craft these sentences that truly told great ideas and got points across. And so he was left with hundreds of notebooks full of just sentences, which he would then draw from to build his essays. And so the second habit he had was he collected ideas so every day he was reading for hours and hours. He read hundreds and thousands of books in his lifetime and he took notes about all the ideas that inspired him. And so when he passed on, he had hundreds and hundreds of notebooks just filled with ideas. And this leads into the third habit which synthesizes both of these ideas. And that was he organized and indexed all the information in his life. Not only did he leave hundreds of notebooks full of ideas, thoughts, and writings, but he also left a ton of indexes of his own work. And so he had your typical index where by topic he had references to every time he had written about a certain topic and where to find it. But he also had a lot of different indexes. For example, he had one index or one notebook that was just about biographies of people who he liked. And so this index had 839 individuals who he liked and had written about and he had references to each and every one of those and where he had written notes about them or where he had written down quotes from these individuals. And so he essentially had indexes of indexes and The Mind on Fire, the book, it, it makes this observation that if you look at the, the organization and the indexes that he left, this would have taken months and months, maybe even years, just to organize by hand all of his notes. But Emerson thought this was such an important thing that he spent a year or two of his life just organizing his notes and his thoughts and his ideas. And I think that's what truly made Emerson Emerson. It's, a, it's inspirational to me that yeah, we can take notes and we can write and we can collect ideas, but if we don't have a system that works for us and that we're able to go back and look at the big insights that we've had and make connections between insights, uh, if we don't do those things, we're missing out on a higher level of thinking and potentially even more insights. I think the biggest takeaway for me is that it does require effort. When I was in college and high school, I, I, I was in the habit of taking notes. And now that I'm not in school, the burden kind of shifts on me where if I'm gonna be a self learner, I need to find a way and a system that can help me understand the insights and the ideas that I have and find a way to organize them so that if I ever need it, I can find those great ideas and insights. But it does require effort. It took months, maybe even a year or two of one of the greatest thinkers life just to get to this point. So Emerson is definitely an inspiration to me. That's all I had for you today. If you have a great system you use to organize your notes, comment below, I'd love to check that out. But I appreciate you watching this. Please hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video.